How are you doing, grown-ups? Um, if you haven't watched one of these before, my name is Miss Lisa, and I get to do the little videos that we're calling our story time extensions, so that after you do your story time video, this week our theme is Scurry Scurry, then you can come on over here, find some ideas for extension activities that you can do at home with your preschooler. Um, so we have a lot of ideas. I hope these all work for you. Let me know if they don't or if you need a modification. I would love to hear about it. All right, our first idea is, I don't know if you've read the book Mouse Paint, but I love in Mouse Paint, they do a lot of color mixing and they start with like red and they add blue and we grown-ups know that that makes purple, but kids don't necessarily know that yet. So I love to get out, if you have eyedroppers, if you have maybe, um, syringes from kids medicine that they could like pull up on that tube and then push down when you work with the um, eye droppers you're working on that pincer grip so it's really great for their writing skills um but i like to start with a, a cup with blue water in it a cup with yellow water in it and a cup with red water in it um you can use food coloring if you have some at home if you don't you might need to get a little creative you can also use paint in it um, I like to do the food coloring because it takes a little bit less to color the whole thing, but it's up to you. So I use, I practice, you have to squeeze in on the eyedropper, put it into the water, and then let go so that water goes up into it. So this is really good um, for them working on that pincer grip, like I said, so that their writing muscles start to develop. Um, it's also fantastic for them to start making predictions, <clears throat> sorry, um, for what they think it's going to turn into. So if they put in some yellow and they put in some red, have them make a prediction, just an educated guess, about what color they think it's going to turn into. Um, when we do this here at the library, I always love to have them wear the little goggles. And not at all necessary, but it makes for such cute pictures. And I do highly recommend, even if you're doing this at home, wearing some sort of water clothing. If you have a raincoat they can put on, if you have a smock that's waterproof, very good idea. This is also a fabulous idea if we have warm weather and you could do it outside. Uh, lots less mess that way. <clears throat> All right, so that's our color mixing idea. You can also, if you do not feel up for that or you have littler ones, you can put two different colors of paint in a baggie and seal the baggie and let your child squish those two colors together and that's another way to experience color mixing with a lot less mess. So I want to make sure I threw that out there for you. All right, our next idea is that everybody knows what do mice eat? They eat cheese. And so we made some mosaic cheese work. I know, it's really beautiful, isn't it? Um, so what we did for this one is we cut the colors that we wanted into small pieces and then we practice gluing it down with watered down glue. Um, both of those skills are really fantastic, again, for that fine motor for those writing development. So if when they're cutting, it's really great to work on those muscles. Um, painting and putting all of these pieces down, even just picking up the pieces and putting them in place is a skill, that's a fine motor skill. So we made a thing of cheese and then I also gave my daughter the option that if she wanted to, she could rip paper, believe it or not, also a great skill. Um, maybe not on things you care about, but if it's for an art project, just work on making sure that they get permission first. Um, so we made, I don't know if you love, if you give a mouse a cookie, but it's one of my favorites. So we made chocolate chip cookies for our mouse and we ripped these. It's kind of hard to tell, but we did. Um, we wanted to practice that skill too, because anytime you rip paper, you grab it with your thumb and forefinger on both sides and then you tear. And that motion is again, fantastic for their fine motor skills. Um, you could do one a day and you could come up with I was thinking about it and you could make like an acorn one, um, talking about squirrels. Um, you could probably come up with a, a few really cute ones. You could also make it like mouse a face and do gray and then add smaller plate ears. I should mention this is just on a plate because it's nice and sturdy, but you can just cut it out of a circle of paper too. That works great. All right, that's our second idea. Our third idea is to go outside and do a hunt for acorns. And if you don't have any acorns in your area, 
You can um, instead just use pom-poms, but I really love the tactile of getting to use the real thing when possible. Um, and so we did an acorn hunt outside, bring them inside. If you want, you can put them in a bin and add some leaves and you can keep doing the hunt over and over again, even if the weather turns on you. I also really like the idea of being able to use them in a, oh, sorry, in a 10 frame. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with 10 frames. It's an idea they kind of introduce in kindergarten a lot of the time. Um, but a 10 frame just kind of looks like this. It's just a frame that you could put 10 items into. And it's a really fast visual representation of numbers. So this one we know is 10 because all of them are filled in. So it must be a 10. Um, I have others, let's see, this one has, we know that that's eight. And the kids will start to get really fast at this because they know if the top is filled in, then that's five. And they know, they start to learn if there's two left, that means there's eight. But top is filled in so they can just go five, six, seven, eight. And it's really wonderful for their math skills. And I thought if you wanted, you could just make a blank one of these and have them fill it in with the acorns that they found. Of course, anytime that we add tweezers to it, it builds on those, again, I know I'm obsessive, it builds on those fine motor skills. Um, and just picking up the acorn still is building those muscles. So even if you don't have tweezers around the house, although I do love to add those because you can use them in a lot of ways, you can still use these and we're still building those muscles. So I hope my 10 frame explanation was good um, and why we use those tweezers. Now, the next thing we do, you might see it up there, cheesy fractions, and you might be thinking, Miss Lisa, my child is three, why are we talking about fractions? But I have found that kids really do well with this if there's a concrete explanation. So if at home you have a slice of cheese and you, you could start to introduce fractions by cutting that slice of cheese in half, I know, cut the cheese jokes, I got it. Um, and then you can say, how many pieces do I have? I have one, two, and when we put them together, we would still have a whole one. So that's, we need one, two parts for the whole. So that means it's one half or one over two. Now I at home made just, they're not, they're not great. Thankfully my kid recognized them as cheese. I was kind of surprised, but I made these and I just put one, on the whole piece and then on the smaller pieces I put I put the fraction and I told my daughter this is how you know that this is one out of two pieces so you need two to complete it one out of two and then she viewed this as a puzzle she thought it was so much fun so we went all the way up to um, one sixth I don't think I said that properly but um, so she knew she needed to find six pieces that said one sixth on them and then she had to put it together as a cheese wheel. Kids might not recognize cheese wheels, so you might need to show them pictures of cheese wheels. Yeah, that's not a real common thing we eat anymore, I don't think. All right, um, I also, if you feel like making it for longevity so you can play with it over and over again, I made those out of cardstock and they're doing okay, but I made these out of flannel or felt years ago and they have gotten played with over and over and over again. So you can also do them out of flannel or paper and I will say I spent maybe 10 minutes on it and that's about as long as I'm ever willing to spend on prep. Um, so just so you know, a heads up. It's a little longer than most of my stuff. My last idea will take you about three seconds. Are you ready? We're gonna go outside and we're gonna watch for squirrels. I know, really challenging, isn't it? If you have binoculars, fantastic. This makes it a much more exciting adventure to look for the squirrels. If you don't have binoculars, that is okay. You can use your handy dandy pretend binoculars. My child does this when she's looking for things inside the house, which I find adorable. Um, or you can make some out of toilet paper rolls. Uh, if you're getting a little thrifty, you are welcome to do that. Um, and I think you can just like wrap tape around the outside of them. They don't necessarily need to have a string, but I have just found anytime they have something similar to this, it does help them to focus and the kids will work on an activity longer if they have the binoculars. Another thing that extends activities a lot is if you have a clipboard somewhere in your house, 
um, you can get out your clipboard, put a piece of paper on it, give them a marker or a crayon, and have them just sit outside and they can make tally marks when they see a squirrel or they can try to draw a squirrel. Or if they're getting into the age where they're trying to sound things out, they can write down observations about the squirrels. If you don't have squirrels in your area, I promise if you go to any of the metro parks, you'll see some pretty quickly. Um, so I hope that that gave you some fun ideas and some easy ways, hopefully, to get outside and play with your child um, and to incorporate the idea of some animals that scurry, scurry. The last thing I wanted to say is that we might not know what scurry means. So we should talk about that. That's animals that run really fast and close to the ground. So another thing that my kids were doing this week is that they were running and seeing how many places they could scurry in our house and then how many things they could hide behind really fast. So they would play a scurry scurry game where they were trying to hide and you can make that really fun and have like during the daytime you could turn the lights off and they could try to hide before you turn the lights back on. Um, and you could practice that scurry scurry because when we are crawling, we're building different muscles and it really is great for development too. So I hope that gave you some fun ideas. I'm so glad that you joined us this week. Um, and best of luck with your homeschool preschool. I hope it's going really well. I miss seeing you in the library, but until we see each other again, I'll see you here. Bye.